Howdy doodly friendarinos, it's time for This Week in News, which is your hot news over the course of the week. I catch you up this here Saturday morning for your breakfast so that you don't have to worry in case you couldn't catch every single episode this week. So with that being said, let's jumpity jump on into the tech news that you may have missed. <laughs> The EU opened in a formal investigation against NVIDIA and their ARM acquisition, which is supposed to be taking place for $40 billion. The EU essentially say, hey, NVIDIA, we don't trust you. And there's a lot of room for abuse here. So we need to make sure you're not gonna abuse this because it could be bad if you did. So we don't, you need to, we, we're gonna look at you and you better, you better comply. It also came out that AMD's next generation chips, the 3D Vcash Zen 3 chips might be going into mass production as of November, which could mean that they could be for sale as soon as January. Additionally, current generation chips might get their B2 stepping in December, which would mean that they would get like very minor updates and you could just pick the new ones up. It really wouldn't matter. It was like when we got the 3900 XT, not a whole lot changed, but it was it was there. But what's a lot changing with this Pimax is the VR words not coming out of my mouth. They have a 12K VR headset is what I'm trying to say. 6K on each eye, integrated Toby eye tracking for perfect foveated rendering. And it's gonna cost you a cool price of $2,400. However, any Pimax headset that you pick up between now and when they launch this thing, you can trade in for a full price refund to get discounted towards this 12K headset in case you don't wanna wait. And I don't wanna wait for any more cloud gaming. Thankfully, Samsung's giving me the gids. Samsung announcing their own version of cloud gaming service for their Tizen smart TVs. No release date, no announcement on games. It was at a developers con conference. So they like they didn't even make this like a main stage announcement, but it's happening. And what's also happening with one of the other cloud streaming platforms, GeForce Now came to the Xbox this week. We actually did a whole video over on UFT Tech about this very concept and how it's a pretty big deal for gamers everywhere. Being able to play Steam games on your Xbox is a pretty cool thing. CSGO, I was able to jam that out. So this adds to the list of things that you have like Google Stadia. Maybe at some point we might get PlayStation Now available on the Edge browser, which would make it so you could play that on the Xbox. Microsoft also showing off Halo Infinite's gameplay trailer for the first time in over a year where they have updated how the game actually looks so that people aren't as disappointed in how garbage it was initially revealed to be so it looks like the delay did them some good and it looks like the original dune part one did the studio some good because they're gonna be coming out with dune part two for everybody who's curious about that they're also gonna be coming out not the same not legendary studios is not coming out with this rockstar studios is coming out with the gta auto trilogy arriving november 11th for 60 dollars the remastered of gta 3 vice city and san andreas should be coming out in early november which Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is also coming out to the Oculus Quest 2 because Facebook announcing that that's happening. However, they haven't said whether or not it's the remastered version or the original one. But for some reason, in case you wanna play that game in VR, you're going to be able to. And in case you care what Facebook calls themselves, they're now identifying as Meta, which I, they are just trying to get away from the confusing branding of being a social media platform that owns other social media platforms. Mark Zuckerberg thinks our non-lizard braids can't handle the fact that Facebook owns WhatsApp and Instagram. That apparently confuses our mere human brains. And so they have to rebrand to a parent company that will now be called Meta and that will own Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and all of those subsidiaries that are gonna be there. Also, additionally, they killed off the Oculus branding. That's no longer gonna be a thing. That's gonna fall under their meta branding. And they also teased out their next upcoming VR headset, Project Cambria, but not gonna be, again, under the Oculus branding. It's expected to be tethered, a high-end device. We're not quite sure exactly of the specs. They just kind of teased it. They also announced that they're gonna be having a mixed reality platform to come out to their Quest device, which will use their pass-through API to allow the cameras on the fund of the Quest 2 to feed through to create an augmented reality experience, such as what they're showing with this dude playing the piano. What also happened this week was a pretty big update from Apple. Their new MacBook Pros with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips got released and the reviews started to come out. A non-tech having high praise for them saying the chips here aren't only able to outclass any competitor laptop design, but also competes against the best desktop systems out there. You'd have to bring out server class hardware to get ahead of the M1 Max. It's just generally absurd. These things are wicked fast. They blaze through a whole bunch of stuff. They're great 
great chips and it does seem to be that people are actually enjoying them as they've been released. Hertz being released from its prison of bankruptcy to purchase 100,000 Tesla EVs for their lineup. It's the largest ever EV purchase that's ever happened and pushed Tesla past its trillion dollar valuation and stock price sitting at over $1,000. Even still after the announcement happened earlier this week. And with those 100,000 Teslas that Hertz has ordered, 50,000 of them are going to Uber to be part of their rideshare program where people who drive for Uber can potentially rent them out and waste all of their money on having a Tesla as opposed to renting one of their other options, which is also absurdly ridiculously priced. Tesla, however, might need to face some competition sometime soon. That trillion dollar valuation might decrease a little bit because Lucid announced that they are starting to ship their cars. As of today, October 30th, they had their launch event for the Lucid Air. And while we're talking about companies being worth a whole bunch, Intel's worth couldn't be increased by the acquisition of Sci-5. That merger is being called off. Sci-5 instead looking to go for an IPO initial public offering. But Intel not down the dumps at that because they had their Alder Lake announcement this week. They announced their chips, which should be releasing to the public on November 4th with all of their previews of the 12th gen Alder Lake systems, which have a heterogeneous architecture with big cores and little cores or power cores and efficiency cores, however you want to call it. However, in the benchmarks that they showed, they kind of hampered AMD by making it so that it was on Windows 11, but it didn't have the cache latency fix that you need on Windows 11 to get AMD's chips up to full speed. So Intel kind of kneecapped AMD, but they said, hey, we're better anyways. We even without the kneecap, but we're just not going to show you the numbers without the kneecap because that's bad for us. However, there is some innovation happening in the world of gaming computers, even with 12th gen being what it is. Asus showing off the ROG Z690 motherboards, which will have a PCI Express slot Q release where you press the button and it slots that GPU right on out of there instead of you have to fish in your dirty little fingers into that PCI Express hole. Intel also confirming that their GPUs are going to have some pretty decent specs. It's going to have a 512 execution units with 32 Z cores, which would likely put it into the performance realm of a 3070 to a 3080. And it was also figured out by Tom's Hardware how much these GPUs may likely cost based on a sweepstakes that Intel is running where they quoted the price of how much the prizes are worth. And they had Intel GPUs included in them. And it looks like it's gonna be between 600 and 800 to maybe $900, depending on which version of the GPU you get. And if it's only 3080 level performance for $900, Intel's dead in the water, but we'll obviously have to wait and see for official numbers and not just sweepstake guesses. And I guess that's the end of this week in news. That's all of the hot news that we had going on this week. Be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's comment response video where I respond to everything that you said this week. Hopefully I get to it. It's always really tricky whether or not I can edit on Saturdays, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna force it into my schedule, okay? See you tomorrow for comment response for breakfast. Cheerios.